Hello, my name is Daniel Phillips. I'm a graduate student in the Gogarten Lab, part of the MCB department in the University of Connecticut, and this is my talk on split intines and cyanobacteria. So first of all, I would like to stress the important role cyanobacteria play in the evolution of uh, Earth and the evolution of life on Earth. Were we to go back billions of years ago, Earth had a very different atmosphere. It had a reducing atmosphere. There was very little O2. Uh, that changes when we start to see cyanobacteria uh, around uh, two and a half, two billion years ago, where we start to see a gradual and then rapid rise in the concentration of uh, O2 in Earth's atmosphere until the level uh, that it's at today, around 20%. And then even today, around 50% of the Earth's atmosphere, oxygen, uh, can be traced back to uh, cyanobacteria uh, in the ocean, um, you know, making them the true lungs of the Earth. And so in trying to learn more about the evolution of cyanobacteria, I'm interested in the distribution and function of intines uh, within this phylum. Intines are genetic elements that reside inside important housekeeping genes uh, of, uh, in, in the genome. So we would see in the top of this figure here, we would see in red, the if this is the DNA sequence, the genomic DNA, we will see the intine coding sequence sandwiched between the X-tene. The X-tene would be the host protein or the DNA which would code for the host protein. Uh, the CNN terminal of that, that would be transcribed uh, together. So now we have an RNA, an, R an RNA molecule uh, combining of the NX team, the N team, and the CX team. And then that will be translated together. So now we have this long polypeptide chain uh, containing the X team, the host protein, and the N team. The intine will uh, splice itself out uh, spontaneously out of this uh, polypeptide chain, and that will leave the mature host protein and the now excised intine. So they're distributed fairly widely among uh, the three domains of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. We see them uh, pretty widespread in, uh, in, in bacteria and archaea. Uh, in eukaryota, they are limited to fungi and protists, limited to single-celled uh, organisms and pretty much entirely. They do seem to exist in plastids. So chloroplasts. Uh, but they are absent from the uh, nuclear genome. Of, uh, of all multicellular uh, domains of life. So there are three main types of intines. First, we have the full-length intine. Uh, this will contain uh, the in this will contain a homing endonuclease domain. Uh, so if you can imagine, this will be translated, uh, transcribed. The intine will self-splice itself. The NSR, SCSR, N terminal splicing region, C terminal splicing region, splice itself out. And then it can go back into the genome and look for a non-intine containing allele. If it finds one, it will cut that um, DNA strand, and then the host cell will repair it using the DNA can using the intine containing allele as a template. Uh, and this allows the intine to maintain itself in a genome, making it much more difficult uh, to be making it much more difficult to be lost. Uh, the mini intine, of course, uh, will have uh, no will have lost its endonuclease. Uh, containing domain, uh, if it ever had one. Uh, and so once lost from the genome, it's unable to reinsert itself uh, back in. And then the split intine, uh, and what I am mostly interested in, uh, will have the N terminal and the C terminal uh, located in um, different loci of the genome. And this could be tens of thousands of base pairs apart. Uh, so you can imagine how Baroque this process is. Um, where uh, we have these basically non-functioning to the host cell uh, pept uh, 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 genes that are going to be transcribed separately, uh, translated separately, and then we have these non-functioning peptide chains um, that have to go through the cytoplasm until the intines can link up, combine, uh, excise themselves, um, connect the two host X-teens, host proteins, uh, giving the native mature functional host protein, and then the, the intine.
So I'd like to talk more about uh, the D- the split in teen, particularly the DNA E uh, split in teen in cyanobacteria. And so on the left, we see an image that demonstrates a little bit more in depth of how uh, the N terminal and the C terminal of the host X teen and N teen um, join together and then the N teen excises itself. So as I said before, this is a little bit of a complex process. It, Process and so it makes one think what benefit this would have uh, to an organism. Well, that's some quite uh, discussion right now uh, in 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 the field. Uh, it's not quite clear if these intines have a role or not. There are some researchers who think they have a unknown basal regulatory role. Uh, there are other researchers, and our lab is of the opinion uh, that these are molecular parasites. Uh, and so they are acting as uh, selfish genes uh, that just want to um, exist. So you can imagine uh, how beneficial it would be for a parasite to make itself impossible to be lost. Uh, for example, were this were a DNA DNA intein containing genome um, were it to lose its DNA intines, well now it would have a non-functional DNA subunit. So as we see in the figure on the on the left, we have, we have these. If we lose the intine, then we have these two, uh, y- you know, useless polypeptide chains that aren't going to make a functional protein. And so, as I said before, these intines are usually found in highly conserved housekeeping genes, genes that it would be hard for a cell to lose, uh, genes where it would be hard for a cell to have these mutate or to mutate or to have this section of DNA of their of of uh, sections of these genes lost. Uh, for whatever reason. So DNA E, again, a very important housekeeping protein is a subunit of DNA polymerase. It's pointed to in red. This, of course, involved in uh, the, the construction of DNA. Uh, and so it cannot function uh, without it. It forms the active site. We see in the red circle on the image on the right. With the DNA strand, double helix, we can see in the middle, buff in blue. And then the DNA E subunit highlighted in red. So if this DNA E split intine was in fact a molecular parasite and does not play a uh, functional role uh, in terms of its host, I would expect that to be reflected in its level of distribution and conservation uh, within the cyanobacteria phylogeny. So here we see my current working phylogeny of uh, cyanobacteria uh, created with 482 core proteins found using a program using get homologs consisting of uh, 133 complete genomes, complete high quality genomes off NCBI with all cyanobacterial families uh, represented in this tree constructed using IQ tree. So this DNA E intine is found in about 80% of cyanobacteria genomes. And so I first wanted to pay special attention into this clade we have highlighted in this strawberry and cream color down at the bottom. So this clade uh, consists of members of Prochlorococcus, Synecococcus, and Synobium. Uh, this is often um, widely accepted to be early branching uh, or early or, or an early branching clades off the cyanobacteria phylogeny. Uh, they are related to each other and most other accepted phylogenies. Uh, they are all cosmopolitan uh, marine cyanobacteria. And then in most literature, it is referenced that Prochlorococcus uh, does not have any DNA E in teen. Uh, in, in, in any of its representative genomes. Uh, there are several, uh, Synecococcus, uh, genomes where, uh, this DNA intine is and is not present. And then, so I thought that would be a good first subject to, uh, to delve more into with the distribution of, uh, DNA in, intines, uh, w- within these genomes. So I'd first like to show you this nucleotide-based phylogeny uh, based off DNA E. Uh, in black, we see genomes that contain uh, the DNA E split intine. In red, we see genomes that do not contain the intine. 
And we do sort of get these interesting clusters. Uh, as we'd expect, we see uh, most of the Porchlorococcus cluster together that do not have the intine. Uh, we see the Synagogococcus and Synobium clustering together that do not have the intine. But we have a, a, a few interesting outliers, the most notably Synagogococcus WH8101. Uh, that does not, that does have the intine, but it matches very closely, uh, but it is in the middle of a, of a non-intine containing group. Uh, and the same with Synagogococcus RS9907 at the bottom. So some interesting anomalies. And then if we look at the amino acid based phylogeny of DNA, so this is the amino, so this is the express protein itself, uh, without the intine, just the native host protein. Again, we see genes with the intine, uh, in black, genes without the intine in red, uh, and we see a nicer level of clustering, although it is very interesting how interspersed it gets early on. Uh, where we'll still see, uh, some synagogococcus and prochlorococcus uh, a, a, a matching, uh, very, very tightly together that do not have the intine, uh, but still interesting. 9107 matches very closely, uh, with non-intine containing, uh, proteins, but it still has, uh, uh, that intine. Again, top and black. But a little bit more tightly clustered together than, uh, uh, than the nucleic acid based phy phylogeny. So I would like to, uh, in the future, and I'm currently working on improving uh, the cyanobacteria phylogeny, I'd like to tighten, out the nu tighten down the number of uh, homologs I'm basing that phylogeny on, uh, removing uh, genes that are prone to uh, horizontal gene transfer, HGT, in order to uh, get a tighter resolution uh, and get higher bootstrap values uh, for each of my branches. Uh, I would like to continue search for lineages where intines are lost and gained. Uh, or if they could possibly be gained through uh, HGT. Uh, I would like to look for further lineages um, similar to the ones we just highlighted, uh, where intines are either, uh, where, where, where intines are either present, where we have a mixture of uh, intine containing and non-intine containing uh, related genomes. And I would like to compare the phylogeny of uh, DNA X-teens to the DNA e intines uh, in, in the consensus for cyanobacteria phylogeny, uh, to see if we see, uh, a conservation of intine sequences, uh, or, or not. So thank you very much, uh, for listening to my talk. I would additionally like to thank and acknowledge all of my committee members, all of the members of the GoGarten Lab, and especially Diana and Tian, who were very helpful in getting my project started.